I'm going to show you guys how to draw one of my favorite tattoo designs. It's the classic old traditional ship. And I'm going to show a really cool variation. And we turn this thing into a really cool pirate sort of kind of ghosty style ship with tattoos and that sort of stuff. It's a really fun one, so let's jump straight into it. So here we go, people. I'm going to be doing this on an iPad in Procreate app. Um, it's really fun drawing out, but everything you see me doing here, you can easily do on paper as well. Just follow along and copy what I do on there. Okay, there's nothing, there's no right major special tricks in that that's going to make it any different, really. So here we go, people. A uh, basic A4 bit of paper. I'm going to create a few layers. And I'll start off with my sketching tool. So, step one. What we're going to do is just kind of build up the foundation for the ship. So I want to sink at the bottom, which is going to be a nice flower. So we're going to start with a basic circle, just like so. And then we get another circle. We go around this. Oh, drag down. So you get one in the middle. So you're doing the paper, just do a circle and a circle. Real simple. Now what we're going to do, we're going to divide this into five. So we're going to get it all lined down the center here. One just about under halfway here. Right here. I mean, you can get this 100% exact if you want. I'm just doing this roughly. This is roughly what, you know, like the five sections will look like. And there might be a slight difference between each one now, but I'm not too concerned about it being 100% accurate on this. So now we have that. That's going to be our basic kind of bottom. And then we want to put the base part of the ship on top. So to do this, we're going to create a nice kind of banana shape. I'm going to go curving under here. Then curving up through the center. And just a little bit curve out towards the top, just like so. And I'm going to curve up that side just there. We're going to connect up just here. And then bring this around like so. So you're going to curve like this. So you're going in this kind of curve direction. And then you're going to slightly twist going the other way. So you're going to go curve. And then curve out. Just over here. Now we want quite a bit of this ship to be on show. So make sure that you know a fair bit of this is coming outside of the flower. Now we're a little bit underneath that underneath it. So it is kind of sitting in there. But not too much to be honest. So there's set one. So we have one, two, three, four, five. The worst lettering in the world for that. <laughs> and then we have a nice banana boat. So once you have the nice banana boat, what do we do from here? So... Step two, we're going to come across top and we're going to create our platform now. So it's going to come up quite high. I'm going to bring this across like so. So we're going to bring ourselves a nice line coming across. And then we're going to bring this line down just here. This line over here, bring this one down. So you kind of got this bog shape. So imagine if you're standing here, you kind of got a bog shape where this bottom line's a bit smaller than the top one is. And now it's going to bring the whole thing down just a touch. So I can fit this in here nicely. And then a big line up, 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 quite high. Up here. So if you bring your solar line, come straight up from the bottom. If you imagine that, you kind of want this line here to be roughly in the center here. Then you're going to bring this line coming down here. So again, we have these two kind of box shapes. We have this here and this here. So the center line is wider and the top line is there. So that's going to be the foundation for the ship's sails. And then what we're going to do from here is just create another little one. So imagine that it's the exact same shape, just in the background, just here. So I'm going to bring this a little bit lower. And just sketch this as if it was in the background, just here. And then I'm going to do another one, just here. Like so. But this third one is not going to have this bottom part, just here. So it's going to be a different kind of sort of cell, just on this bit. So now I'm going to add some lines in between. So I'm going to divide this, I'm going to add three in here. So this section just here, we're going to go one, two, three. So now we have one, two, three, four, five cells. So nice big stack. You can do as many or as little as you want. I recommend doing at least three. You know, two's a little bit too undercut on it. Um, but yeah, get as many as you want. Depends on how tall you want to make it, really. But once you have this, then we're going to go for the cells. So you are going to get this kind of front cells, but to be at the beginning, I'm going to be concerned about these kind of cells here. So what we're going to do is create these curves just like this. Like this. And like this. And then what we're going to do is going to do the exact same on the other side. Now, it's important to make sure that the curves are out this kind of way. If it's the other way, it would make sense with the way the ship's going. Because you've got to imagine this. The way the wind's kind of blowing the sails, it's kind of puffing them out. So, just like so. And then once you've done the side bits, we're going to get the bottom. Now, the bottom bit is going to curve. But it's going to curve to an angle. So, it's going to come to the side like this. Okay, you don't want to go like this. So, imagine if you went here and you made this dead center point just here. It's not going to quite look right. It's not what we want. We want this basically the highest kind of point. To reach a little bit to the side. Okay, not too much, but just a little bit. So you can see this is kind of like skewed a little bit this way. Just really nice, simple kind of curves. So 
just like that. So then we've got our cells in there. I'm going to bring in our next cells as well. So we're going to come across just in the background and mark our lines in to begin with. So you're going to bring these little lines and especially just a little bit lower than what the other ones are here. So you've got this line here. So this line's going to just be a little bit lower. This line's here. So this one's going to be a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. And then same thing in the background, just bring those lines just there. So you kind of have them roughly in place. So now we have these. I'm going to basically mark in the front part of the ship and then we come back to the flower and start building the thing out from here. So I've got like a nice kind of sort of shape to this. We've got this kind of like nice kind of rectangular shape, which is what we want. So I'm at the end of the ship just here now. So you can bring this line and this line's going to come out quite nice. And across this should just a straight line and then bring a straight line back like so. So you're kind of giving the ship, uh, the ship a big kind of horn in the front. The nice big circle around the outside just part just there. And I'm going to reinforce this shape just a little bit. So I'm going to bring this little line just underneath here. Coming back here. And then this front bit, just a little line just here and here. So you kind of give this little bit of outline to the ship now. So you can see where it's starting to take shape. And from the tip of this to here is where we're going to have our secondary cells. So it's going to be the front cells. I'm going to bring this line like so. And the idea is it's going to be roughly sort of triangular. So you imagine like this kind of rough sort of triangle shape is going to fit within that. So I'm going to make it a little bit of an arch, curve in here, a little bit of an arch, curve in here, and then another one just there. And there's going to be two of these, so I'm going to bring my second one, which is going to sit behind it. I mean, you can sketch over if you want, but just imagine this kind of goes behind this one. Like so. So I've got two sails. I've also made, it, made them kind of point towards one of the cells kind of tips. So that's where it kind of starts from. And then we're going to get a line just come out the center of these. Like so. And coming out the top just there. So this is the basic sort of structure for the ship. So now we're going to sort of start building the foundation to add the extra bits around there. It's going to make it nice and interesting. So we've got our flower to begin with. So again, I'm just going to bring another little circle just here. Shrink this down just a little bit. So you've got another circle just inside this. Then I've got a little circle just inside that one, just into this one side. And now where you've got these five circle bits here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little circle just in the center of each one of these. Just touching that line. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see. And then what I'm going to do is bring this line down here. And then I'm going to curve off of this. And then I'm going to leap around that circle edge. Come across here. And then curve back down. And same with this side, we're going to curve up, curve around this, and then curve down. Curve around to the edge and come down. We're literally just repeating this exact same process. Now, it's a very easy way to just kind of modify these kind of flowers to make them more interesting. It's just to put something in there. So, like, you want each one to be pretty much the same. So, put an obstacle, like, make a different kind of thing. You get like three kind of bumps. Um, this could come to little kind of angular points. So, Rather than it kind of curving, you can go kind of go one, two, three, like bounce, where it's like a nice kind of hard sort of like point just in here. But it's all those little things that will make it different in a very easy, simple way to do. You know, you can um, come up with like literally like hundreds of different kind of flowers very simply just by understanding how you want to modify them. I'm just putting a little line just here in each one of them. Just coming out roughly to where that circle is, like that. And boom, that's roughly our flower shape. You know, once you get rid of the outside parts. And then we're going to have the leaves on the outside. So the leaves are basically going to help sort of like you know, branch this around here and give us a little bit to kind of work off of for the background. So I'm going to bring in a curve shape like this. I'm going to curve shape. And I'm going to basically do two sizes. I'm going to have one sort of like slightly longer and one slightly shorter. And I'm going to do this kind of rounded. You can do as many as you want with these as well. Um, in my opinion, it's very hard to have too many leaves. You can have too few sometimes, but I'm too many is a... Not an easy thing to do, to be honest. Same thing with roses. You can always add like as many leaves as you want. Now we can just leave it alone. You get it? Terrible dad joke there. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So you can see, this is our basic kind of structure now. So we had this. So what I'm going to do now is just come in. I'm just going to raise a few bits just to make it a bit more kind of clear. If you literally hold the eraser, it would just change to the, uh, the same kind of pen tool you got. So I basically want to still with a pencil. I want it to fill that pencil in a minute. No, you, can, you can go to other tools if you want, you know. I like to try and do this, kind of feels more kind of like real. It's more like drawing on paper this way. It kind of keeps that uh, traditional kind of vibe going. 
and traditional like mythology behind it. Methodology? I think that's a word. If it's not a word, you know what I'm on about. It's the technique, it's the method to making it look the way it's supposed to. So we've got that. So we've got this nice kind of basis. And now I want to add the water. So the reason why you added these leaves, so now it gives me a position to add the water off of. So you've got this kind of boundary here and boundary here. So one day is I'm going to make this kind of a nice kind of wiggly line. So I'm off of this, connecting with the leaves around the outside edge. So you can see it's got this nice kind of water wave. Now if it's in here, if I didn't have these edges, I'd have nothing to kind of make this go to. So I think kind of bringing it down or just fading out to nothing, which you can do sometimes in traditional, but sometimes it can ruin it and it kind of takes away from the vibe of it. So again, here we go. Here's our ship. So what should we do now? Let's add some clouds in the background. Now I like my clouds nice and big and chunky and they're going to go like sort of semicircle shapes. I mean, you can do these really small and tight going like this. You can also have them going the other way as well. So you can kind of go like this way around if you want. It's really that's your own personal preference. But for this particular one, I want nice kind of big chunky kind of clouds. I'm just going to curve these roughly around the edge. I'm not too fussed exactly how to kind of sit and just kind of rough in, roughly filling up that area. And I'm liking that. And the top part of the mast here, you're going to have your flag coming off like so. And now where we've done these kind of curves here for these, I'm just going to do these for these background ones now. So we're going to curve, 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 curve. Now the only one I'm not going to do is that bottom one in the background just here. Because to do this, I basically want to create a nice little loop. Second loop, a third loop. Just create this dipping kind of sort of cell for the back, which I always like to finish it off in the background. And then lastly, just in the back part here, we're going to go one line, two line, three line then just put some lines in the middle and boom we have a net and I say lastly but it's going to be a few more actually in here than what I'm saying lastly so we're going to get our mask going out the middle and I'm going to put these little lines just on the outside so you're going to go line go straight out the middle and then two little side lines just on each bit and only put it kind of where you see it you know if, it's a, if there's not enough space like here it'll be over here so I'm not going to bother putting it there just where you can pretty much see it really so little lines just on the ship body, like so. And there we have our basic kind of ship shape. So you can see, it's a really cool design. So now I'm going to sort of show you how you kind of modify this before we start doing the line work. Now we're going to modify it and then we're sort of like uh, do the line work for ease as well. So this is what a classic ship would be if you want to have the top. So I'm just going to duplicate this now. I'm going to turn the opacity down a little touch. I'm going to show you how I'd modify it so you get like the nice kind of tatted wings, that sort of stuff. The flowers pretty much going to stay the same, but I want to change the ship. I want to make the ship feel like a nice kind of ghost ship or like a bit like a horror kind of ship or pirate ship. I think I want to see it. Nice kind of tatted cells. So where well, you got these cells and they're nice and clean, I'm going to bring these back and I'm going to make them tatted. So I'm going to bring back here and I'm going to make these look kind of tear. So I'm going to keep kind of zigzagging every now and again, like so. You know, like this edge here, I'm not making like a nice kind of clean straight line. It's kind of curving this way and that way. You can put a little tear just in the kind of sails. You know, just keep it nice and simple. You don't overcomplicate it. You know, this is where I think a lot of people go wrong. They want to overcomplicate it. You know, not too many. Just nice and smooth, simple like this. And again, so where you have this kind of curve here, this bottom curve, which should be like nice and straight, you're not going to have that. So this is going to curve like here. And this is going to curve in the background. And again, we're almost like that sort of zigzagging just with curved edges. You know, think of S curve. So it's always going to be like an S curve an S curve, something like this, kind of twisting. Nothing too complicated. Next travel again. No. Go too crazy, you will lose that effect we want. So again, just kind of keep zigzagging these. And kind of just let the lines kind of like happen as they kind of like, you know, place. You know, don't kind of like try to force it too much. Focus more on the hand motion. Than the actual sort of drawing, you know, you get that kind of nice kind of flow motion, like you just, just kind of feel your hand doing that sort of motion. You know, it's it sounds weird, but as you start to do it, you know, it all comes like sort of like second nature as you start to do it. And don't feel like you have to go to the same speed as I go. You know, I wear when I'm aware when I do these things, I do I tend to draw pretty quick. And um, remember, I've drawn these things like a hundred times over. You know, they make no difference to me. It's um, and the speed doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if this takes you five minutes or ten hours. As long as you're having fun, you know, that's the main thing. And it's all about the end result. So, that's the brilliant thing about YouTube. You can pause rewind. 
Um, if you're watching this on Instagram, then you can't pause rewind. Uh, so yeah, maybe go check out on YouTube. You never know. Makes things a bit easier. And remember, if you do like this stuff as well, people, I have my sets with how, uh, tattoo space. I've got my How To Traditional, which has got like a really cool ship tutorial in there as well, as well as like 50 other designs. So make sure you go check that out. So you can see you've got this really cool, nice, nice kind of sort of tattered sort of cells. And you literally just do the same thing just on the outside, just here. Like so. And the bottom one might kind of keep the same, just put a few like sort of tears just inside it. Now remember, wear these ones on the outside as well. Don't go too comic. If anything, you want to go less complicated with the outside ones, because there's not too much from the show. You know, a lot of times it's like a kind of repeating kind of pattern. It looks a bit better than um, having too much detail. Now, if you're just doing it realistic, there'd be like tons and tons of detail. But with traditional, you know, it's all about kind of sort of trying to strip it back and keep it simple. It's making the most with, it's making the most with the littlest you can, in a way, if that makes sense. You know, it's making each line kind of count. You know, so it's... I think that's where the beauty of like traditional comes in, and that's what makes it a little bit more harder than people kind of realize when they first start, you know, because it's like, you know, when you do like realistic, you know, you have hundreds of thousands, you know, like, you know, sort of little details and all these kind of aspects. So there's tons of things you can do to make the design better. Yeah, when you strip it back, it comes down to fewer and fewer things. So those things kind of need to be on point and kind of how you want them to be. So yeah, really kind of play around with that. So you got uh, another thing I'm going to do here. So basically where you had this kind of mast and you had this sort of circle in the background, I'm just going to turn this into a pirate skull, so... Kind of create this curve around it. It's all sort of drop in the middle. I build two little teeth, two eyes, and the nose. Nice, simple, just on the front like that. Yeah. So that'd be how you turn into a nice kind of pirate ship. I'm going to show some designs afterwards how we sort of done that. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you what. We're going to go through here. I'm going to show shade like this, and I'm going to show you the normal version afterwards how it kind of look. So now we have this done. We have pretty much what we want. So I'm going to come in and start refining this now. So how do we do that? I'm going to turn the transparency down just a touch, create a new line on top, and this is going to be our line work. Really nice and simple, and I'm going to go black. Um, I would normally use my studio pen, which I have modified, but to make things easier for you guys, um, you'll have it list already. So if we just go down to calligraphy, monoline, and I'm going to set this up how I want it. These lines are way too bold. Well, my life is stupidly thick, actually. I'll take that back. I'm going to go to... Yeah. No, that's the one. So for some reason, my line was huge. I don't know why that was so big. But yeah, there we go. So you've got a nice line. The idea behind it, this line is basically like a pen. So when you sort of zoom in, it's the exact same thickness the whole way around. It doesn't change. It's not tapered, uh, which is pretty much what we want for traditional. You can have the tapered lines in there if you want to, but I don't particularly want that for this. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to start with the flat at the bottom. Just to quickly do this a bit easier, I'm going to go onto here, Edit Drawing Guide, click on Symmetry down here, and I'm going to have this on, and I'm literally going to put this in the middle, just here. This allows me to draw both sides, because this is symmetric, so I'm going to go like this, draw on both sides at once. Now, I know on paper you don't have this, so don't worry, just draw normally on paper. Um, this literally just speeds it up for the video. That's literally the only difference this is going to make. So we are literally just going to go around our edges now. I quite like to do the lines first in the middle, so I'm going to go lines here. So those lines are in place. Then once they're in place, I can just kind of like whip in these lines. Now again, I am aware that I am drawing pretty quick. Don't feel like you have to go the same speed as me. Take your time, people. There's nothing wrong with going a bit slower. Now, if you need to, pause, rewind, take a break, have a coffee, have a tea, or whatever is your choice of poison in a way. And now I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to click on Drawing Assist, so it's turned it off now. So now it's just doing one side, it's not going to do both. And we can just come up here and just turn Drawing Guide off. Real simple. Because everything else now is not symmetric, you know, these uh, leaves and stuff are not in the same place, so we no longer need the symmetry up. So I'm just going to turn that, just that. Now for these leaves, we've got this basic shape, and what I want is this kind of curve. So you see, like a nice kind of curve to a point. Now I often say, like, try to lock your hand and just kind of get familiar with this kind of motion. 
You know, it takes a bit of a try. And you're not going to get perfect every time, like, you know, like that. I didn't get perfect first try. Get familiar with this kind of sort of motion. Especially traditional. You just got to find it in this motion a lot of the time with a lot of patterns and a lot of different things. And there's something really satisfying about doing this motion. I don't quite know what it is, but I could quite happily do it all day. When it works. So we come back again. So we've got this wave here. So I'm going to go whoosh, 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 whoosh. Nice. I like that line. Bring that up. Bring that up there. So like I said, we're literally just going over our outline now. Like so. Then we're going to get our nice. I'm part of our ship. And I know the word for it, for some reason I'm not thinking of it. So if you can remember what a part of the ship is called, please just like comment below and let me know. Because it was really bugging me. I feel like I've said it a million times. I know exactly what it is, and I just cannot think of what the word is. Which is just typical when you're filming, you know, you want to come professional and you're like, okay. I've done a million ships, I know what the parts are called. But my mind is just going blank. So yeah. If you know what that part is called. Just drop it in the comments below. So you can see I'm just whipping these in here. And I think the secret to like, you know, like we feel sort of like now the hand speed that I kind of go in that is literally just like kind of letting the line kind of go itself. You know, just get that kind of wrist motion going. You know, a little bit is muscle memory and the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. You know, don't worry if you can't do it to begin with. You know, that will come within, you know, in time. You know, I promise you. But for now, people, just, yeah. Just try and feel it when you draw. Just try and feel that motion. Now, if it helps, try and kind of like, not tense your wrist, but kind of like, imagine kind of locking it away. You know, it's nice to be kind of free-flowing when you're doing like painting and stuff. But for this, sometimes it's very handy to like, lock your wrist in place a little bit. Now, you see like, you know, like here, like, you can see, like, from my wrist, there's very, very little motion in my wrist. You know, I can make it easier for some people when they're doing that. I'll give you a lot more of these tutorials. Um, I really want to get back into them. And I can completely dedicate to doing that now. So, if there's anything specifically you want to know to how to draw... Or anything you kind of struggle with, like comment below so I can start making the videos up. I do have quite a lot of stuff on fire already, which I need to uh, kind of finish up. And I know I've been away for a while, but um, yeah, I've missed being away. I want to go back to what I love doing, which is teaching. I love teaching you guys. I know, so I know some people sort of like, I'm not really fan of it, but I just. I love passing on my knowledge to people and just kind of letting them do what they do. You know, I know I think that I'm the best at their stuff, you know, but hey, everyone's got something to offer. And you guys seem to like what I do, so as long as you guys keep liking it, I'll keep making it. So just keep drawing those lines in there. Uh, like so. After I finish as well, I'll show you a design I spent a bit more time on. I'll show you a few sort of variations and stuff you can kind of throw in there to make it interesting. So you can see the ships come together really nicely now. And we are going to go down and do our, um, our little fine line details in a minute. But for now, we're just focusing on these big, massive bold lines. You know, it's always worth doing the bold lines first. You know, the bold lines are your structure. And your little fine lines are just for like full detailing and extra bits. It's more for like complementing and bringing out certain aspects. So yeah, I'm looking at. I think I might have the clouds in thinner line detail. So yeah, I'm liking this. So now I'm going to come in. I'm going to do my little line details. So I shrunk my line down now. 
I'm gonna go ahead and there. I'm actually gonna go a touch bit thinner than that. Actually, that's a little bit thicker, not one. Yeah, that works. And I'm basically just copying the motion inside this now. So I'm basically making a smaller version of each one of these petals on the inside. So it's just creating this little like kind of line space in between. And you want to try and get this line space nice and even, as even as you can around the outside edge. Just keep doing that for each one of these outside petals. Like so. Oops. My camera. And now we've got this wave. I'm going to bring in this curved line like this. And we're going to come down. So I want this thing to kind of come this way. So we're going to create this loop in lines. That keep basically coming back in this direction. So we're following our wave line. And bringing straight lines down. And we're basically making these little segments. That we can kind of shade off. And it's going to give it that kind of like wave feel. Yeah, that's the secret behind the traditional kind of waves. So we're going to get a put little lines in our ship now, just here. Mm. No, you probably want to see one there. So now we got that, so I'm going to add the clouds. If you want, you can draw and hold and you're going to get a perfect curve. Um, I'm just going to whisper mine in here. I'm not too worried about them being 100% accurate. Because we are just drawing for fun. You know, if you're drawing for a tattoo design, you know, then you can kind of like spend more time making it 100% accurate, you know, but if you're just drawing for fun or just creating a bit of just random flash, you know, and it's like, it's that fun. It hasn't got to be perfect, you know, it's just more about enjoying it. So see, we've got this really cool design here now. So we're going to go up on here and let's just turn off those sketching layers. We don't need them now. And we're like, we have our line work. So now we're just going to click on this. I'm going to click on the line work and I'm going to click on a reference, this button here. Click on this, and it's going to put a little line under there that just says Reference. Now, very, very important. So basically now, when we use the Selection tool, this little button up here, and we click on Automatic, which is this one just here. Now, anything that's closed, you know, where there's no gap, it will be able to select within that, no matter what layer we're on, which is what we want. So we're going to create a layer underneath, which is going to be our shading layer. And we're going to name this Shading. And I'm going to change my brush now. I'm going to go Spray Paint. Medium nozzle, which you guys have access to, it's just basically already built into it. You know, nothing special about it. It's just one of my favorite brushes to use. So now we've got this, we're going to start shading it in. So I said it's a separate layer here, but because this is reference, I can now go selection, automatic, and I can select these areas like so. Now, if you click and you drag, very, very important, you're going to see selection threshold. Just put this up in the high 90%. If it's too low down, you're going to get this weird, like, um, annoying kind of marks around the edge, like it's still kind of white line edge. Um, so yeah, just avoid that by doing, you know, selection threshold. And now if I do that, we select it. And now when I'm going to draw, it's only going to draw with any areas we just selected. So it makes things a lot easier. You know, obviously you're doing it on paper, just stay within your line work. You know, it's, um, it's literally just a tool to speed it up. It's not making any difference. It's just speeding things up. So I'm going to select the outside edges here on the petals. And I'm going to shrink this down. It's too big. And I basically want to get some black on the edge here. And I always say, don't be afraid of going black. Now, black is so important when it comes to traditional. Like, go really heavy with it as well. Like, I want to be pure black. You know, I know people are using pencils. So a lot of times people get a bit scared about going too dark. No, 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 no. Go dark with it. Trust me. For traditional, you need the darkness. You know? It's like heavy metal rock music. It needs to be dark. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I'm just selecting the waves here. And the waves, I'm just doing like a nice kind of gradient across the top. So the opposite way around to this as well. Because obviously you've got this line around here. So I don't want these waves to sort of disappear. And these leaves to disappear. So I basically put the opposite way around. So you get a highlight there. Which separates the two of them. It's always important to remember which direction you want your shading to go in. So now it's going to select inside the ship. Like so. Yeah, it's going to go black on that part actually. So black from the edge there. Black from the edge there. And again, just leave a nice highlight just here. You know, like I said, like I said, you can go dark here because you've got a white highlight on the edge, right? uh, the outside edge. So that's separating the two. Now we're not losing anything. The detail stays in there. So I'm going to select my sails. And now you've got a couple of choices. Different ways. You can always like, you can basically shade from a corner. You can shade from two corners. You can shade from one side. You can shade from the other side. You know, there's tons of different ways. You can black them out if you want sometimes. But um, the black only kind of works with certain things. Obviously, it'd be too much on this. 
But what I want to do on this one, I think I'm just going to shade from the outside edge like this and leave my tattered edges kind of on show. And I'm going to run this very similarly just through all of these things. So I'm just going to select them and just go across very gently. So imagine the cell pit, I'm going to get this. And because it's a cell pass at the bottom, I'm just going to go from the top and just shade down. And obviously where this is like a nice kind of like a sort of ghost ship, I want it to be quite dark and the background is going to be a bit more lighter. You know, if I was doing this as a standard ship, which I will show you in a little while, um, I would obviously go much lighter because it's a different kind of style one. But yeah, it all depends on the kind of mood you want. I want this to be quite, you know, sort of like a, I suppose like kind of gothic in a way and that's, it's a dark kind of ghost kind of pirate ship. So I want the black sails and stuff. Now, always try to think about the mood you want, you know, if you wanted to kind of give off a certain kind of vibe, you know, like the shading will really try, you know, like translate that. So I'm doing the same thing for each one of these. So I'm literally just shading just gently across the top. And the good thing is when you select it and you have that area, you can have the brush quite big. So when I'm drawing, I'm not even drawing inside it. I'm drawing the outside and I'm just using that kind of fade edge to build up and just layer up there. You know, like if we're trying to draw on any edge, it can be a bit tricky, especially with um, digital. You know, I feel it's easier to kind of sort of shade off the edge, you know, without the kind of sort of selection tool when you do it uh, normally on paper. But with digital, the selection tool just makes things so much easier. So um, it doesn't quite work the same as paper in that way. So I said that's one big advantage that paper has, where it's much easier to sort of do that. You know, if you're like a marker pen, you can easily just kind of flick off the edge. That's where you can't exactly do that on here. Not yet. I have a cool product which I'm doing, which you might be able to do that at some point. So keep an eye out. But remember, like I said, if you do like my stuff, I do have uh, stuff on Tattoo Space. That's tattoospace.com. I have all my tutorial sets on my other kind of brushes. And I have tons of stuff coming this year, especially this year. Um, a whole range of really cool like, things that no one's ever done before. Um, and I'm sure it's going to kind of love it and it'll blow your mind. So make sure you keep an eye for it. And the flag, I'm going to go one side and the other side to get a nice little like, shade in the middle. You can put a, a pirate flag symbol in there if you want as well. I was going to put that kind of black to begin with. Um, in my modified one, I shared a little bit of wool. How can I have that? So now I'm going to select the clouds. Just like so. And I said, because it's quite dark, I don't do these two darks. If I've done these two dark, if I go like this, you know, it kind of like feels a bit too much and you're kind of losing track of where everything is. So what I want is black on the outside edge. But not too much. I want to kind of fade off. So I'm going to touch more gentle. And get a much smaller, like, like longer, smoother transition. So you've got this much kind of lighter bit around the outside. So it's almost making like a glow behind this. They're very important, like, you know, like, um, in my opinion, like, you know, you always want, like, either your object to be dark and background to be light, or your background to be dark and your object to be a bit lighter. You know, it's how you kind of create nice kind of contrast between the design. Now I'm going to select the flower, and this is going to be the last bit of this, so I'm going to go kind of grey. And very cool technique, which I love to do. I'm just going to go from the bottom, I'll just up a touch, and I'm just going to fade this out. That I just love doing our flowers, I just think it looks super cool. So we're happy with that is our ghost ship. Now, so now we have our ghost ship. I was going to show you the slight variations we have. So here we have two really cool variations. So imagine this is like a standard kind of ship. So when you look at it, you can kind of see the differences. So you can kind of see like the sails the way they are. You know, I had these kind of sails, you know, come from, from the bottom corner and they're much more sort of straight. I say the restriction ones. I've got tutorials for these. Um, there's one very similar to this in my set, and there's also one here on YouTube. You go back a while ago. Um, I will make a modified version for that as well, because I've done it quite a while back. Um, the ship is a bit more kind of straight. You don't have the pirate skull. You just have the basic kind of curve. Um, this one I kind of blacked out of the way, so you can see how different that kind of looks. This one I've done like a little white edge, just around the flower, which is a bit different just here. So I basically erased that bit around the outside edge. So imagine the last one we've done, we've just done a gradient. But a really cool little tip, you can just do that, just erase the edge, and you get this really cool effect around it. This one here, because this is lighter, I went darker with the background. And you can see how the sun on top of this one. And because I wanted that to show off, I just done like a really, like a really light grey bit just around the outside. Nothing too crazy. On these ones as well, the uh, the banners, uh, the bar bits are basically double the lines up, so they're a bit thicker. That's always another option you can do. And with our cool pirate one over here, I basically that's so again. I've had a few extra lines just in a flower, so that's an extra uh, difference you can do as there as well. And um, again, I raise that little line around there. Here I put a few little circles, just on the side of the ship. A little line detail just coming through as well. Now, all these little things, there's little extras you can do. So on the actual sails here, you can see I've got the lines coming up this way, this way. And you can see on these, I basically gone the opposite way around. So rather than doing um, the tattered flag bits, you know, that, that way, 
I've done the opposite on these ones. So this is like black from the bottom going upwards. So it shows you how both of them kind of look. So if you go back and see the last one we just done, you can see how that looks. Um, this one I've added some little lightning bolts around the outside, some little extras. You can always like, expand with these kind of things, put stuff on the outside. You know, add like a little kind of pirate flag at the top, the moon. So like, you know, you can take your time, do stuff like this, and you can really kind of modify and you know, really play around. You know, it's the exact same kind of sort of technique for each one of them, but those little minor differences can make a huge difference in the end, people. So really play around with that, have some fun. And yeah, if you draw something, make sure you tag me in it. I love seeing what you guys do. So if you're on Instagram, stuff like that, tag me in it. I love to see it, okay? I will comment, like, all that kind of stuff all the time. And I said, if you want to see more of stuff, go to tattoospace.com. You can buy stuff on there. Or well, check out my new stuff. I will have the um, the picture tutorials for these as well. So we go on here. We're going to have like this. Or it's going to be all the description kind of tutorial for these two in particular on my Instagram. So go over there and check that as well, people, if you want to see that. But for now, people, I'm the Broken Puppet, and I shall see you next time. Peace.